This program is rated PG. It contains themes and scenes which may not be suitable for very young audiences. Parental guidance is advised. Be advised that the views and opinions of the hosts and guests do not reflect those of the station. Another week in our Asian century of 100 years, uh, and uh, this has been a particularly exciting week uh, with the Asian uh, ASEAN Summit and with the G20 in Hangzhou, China. But before all of that, uh, like every week in our journey around Asia and around the world, we first talk of the success between Filipinos and China in work, in livelihood, in business, in culture, and today we feature Mr. David Nye, our very own David Nye, who has been in uh, major uh, editorial and uh, media work in the Philippines, who is now uh, senior editor of the Global Times in uh, Beijing, China. That's uh, David Nye. He visited us in the Philippines just last weekend. Unfortunately, he didn't, doesn't have time, or he didn't have the time to join us for our uh, discussion today. He is there's the Global Times. Uh, one of our guests today also has been featured in Global Times several times. We will introduce him a, li a little later on. And um, that's where uh, the uh, office of uh, David Nye is. And later on, we'll uh, feature some of his uh, views uh, as he spoke at the uh, Kamuning uh, Cafe, uh, which we attended and uh, shot for this episode. Uh, the uh, author writer I mentioned that has been featured by Global Times, a Filipino, uh, Rod Kapunan is with us uh, in this episode. Uh, and uh, we were together with Rod uh, visiting uh, David Nye just uh, a few months ago at the Global Times offices in Beijing, China. And of course, our other guest uh, from uh, the U University of Louvain and other tasks, in including uh, consultancy to some ASEAN governments. Uh, Professor Celso Kainglet, uh, Professor of International uh, Ethics, Ethics and International Relations, and Practitioner. So let's uh, listen to David Nye's uh, views on two things, his job at Global Times, and uh, I think uh, the other is the uh, perception of, uh, of Duterte from the Chinese point of view. Okay, let's uh, take a look at some of these. But that's really a good starting point uh, for today's discussion. Uh, and, and let's start out basically with my stay, for example, uh, working for, for the Global Times, which is, by the way, the official Communist Party newspaper of China. So, so that's how influential it is. And, I, and I'm a senior editor there. And, and many Chinese and, and even my, my fellow expats ask me, uh, David, uh, who's this new president of yours? Uh, why is he talking that way? Why is he acting this way, this and that way? Uh, and, and that's the starting point of this discussion, because the battle here, the way I see it, the battle uh, for, for President Duterte, or, or for any president for that matter, but I think especially for President Duterte, <coughs> Uh, is a battle of perceptions. It, it's really a battle, it comes down to a battle of perceptions, all right? Uh, never mind the reality. The reality almost doesn't count. What matters here is a battle of perceptions. And in the battle of perceptions right now, because, precisely because, uh, President Duterte is something of an enigma to, to most, if not all, foreigners, especially to Americans. 
people, foreigners especially, I think, do not understand where Duterte is coming from. All right. Now let's 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 backtrack a bit and go to the beginning. Let's go to the beginning. When when he first took office and he first made this, these pronouncements and the first news of killings were reported. At that time, at that time, I think, uh, just, just to be perfectly honest and candid, at that time, uh, his communication team should have come out very strong already I told you, it's a, it's a battle of perceptions. It's a battle of narratives. It's a battle of narratives. You have to win the narrative war. So his communication team should have come out very strong that time and said, look here, we understand, we understand that there are allegations. Okay, well, we have one clip and we have a second clip. Uh, let's go straight to the second clip and then we'll get our... Uh, comments from our guests uh, on David Nye's uh, views. Okay, uh, can we? Uh, is it ready? Yes. Uh, there's only one clip over there. Uh, that, okay, so there are two things. Of course, his job at Global Times and then the perception of uh, Duterte and his uh, advice uh, uh, that uh, Duterte and his uh, media team should control the narrative. But uh, you're very close to David Nye. Uh, what are your impressions now? I think he he would be very useful back in the Philippines after his <laughs> and long experience in Singapore, Hong Kong, and so on, uh, in, turn, in uh, regional media in particular. I think uh, the Duterte government should uh, hire uh, David Nye because I believe he is one person who can uh, digest what the president wants to convey. First is that we must take note that it was the media outfit itself of Mr. Duterte who failed to clarify what happened. For instance, that uh, I don't want to call it a faux pas, it was addressed to a columnist, not to Obama. That's right. The, the it was addressed to Obama and of course it was, he was entrapped in that situation mm. by our local media. But the duty of the spokesman of the president, President Duterte, was to clarify that, yes. not to exacerbate the situation. Okay. It was wrong. <coughs> of course, the president can say anything, but he can, you, But if it is possible for you to deflect what he said, say, instead of insisting that it was Obama who was maligned, That's right, yeah. no, it is, it's very clear. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I think uh, David Nye has shown the Filipino talent can achieve very much uh, even in China, uh, where people who have the impression of the language barrier. But you have been a consultant to some ASEAN governments, and uh, you really put value in the ASEAN perspective and Asian perspective. Give us your two cents worth on this uh, matter of Filipinos working in Asia. Well, with my experience in Cambodia and Vietnam, they have very, very high regards for Filipinos. In fact, in Cambodia, Filipinos are considered as first-class citizens. No? Uh, our telenovela are making waves there. You ask any tuk-tuk driver if uh, she knows Marian Rivera, and the immediate reply is Marimar. Uh -huh. no? yeah, yeah, Filipinos are, are, are well regarded there. Okay, I think the message of this uh, segment is that Filipinos should now consider ASEAN as its uh, market uh, for its uh, talents uh, and no longer the U.S. because there are actually very many Filipino Americans coming back to the Philippines looking for employment. Okay, that's our first segment and thank you David Nye. Please keep up uh, the good work there representing the Filipino talent. Okay, let's take this break.